Hello friends, in this video we are going to look at stability belt, the continuation of the radioactivity series. Basically stability belt is that region where we shall find stable isotopes or stable atoms. Let's take a look at one of the graphs that we shall use to be able to identify what a stability belt is. However, one thing you should know is that usually for an atom to be stable, we must have a given number of neutrons and a given number of protons. And for atoms to be stable, this neutron to proton ratio should somehow be perfect for them to be stable because neutrons are there somehow to counteract the repulsion forces between protons. However, if you have too many neutrons, the atom will not be stable. And if you have too many protons, they also, also the atom will not be stable. So what happens is that we must have a, a way to find a good number of neutron to proton ratio that can help us identify which atoms will be stable. So let's have a look at this line here. This line here shows a region or the stability line. And in this stability line, what happens is that we have the number of neutrons being put to the number of protons. That is to say, the neutron to proton ratio will be equal to one. For example, when you look at atomic number 40 here, atomic number 40, if we extrapolate upwards and then horizontally, we shall realize that at this point here, we shall have 14 protons and then 40 neutrons. However, when you look at some of the stable elements, for example, neon, neon has 10 protons and number of neutrons 20 minus 10, which is 10. So neon has 10 neutrons and 10 protons. And as such, the NP ratio, the neutron to proton ratio 10 over 10 will give us 1.0. So neon has 1.0 proton neutron to proton ratio, and as such, it is stable. So we shall realize that elements that are having atomic number 20 and below will tend to be stable when they have neutron to proton ratio being equal to one. However, when we continue increasing or in continuously increase the number of protons and then go to iron, iron has 26 protons and then 30 neutrons. So 30 over 26, we shall have around 1.15 in terms of neutron to proton ratio. Thirdly, we can also have our silver, 107. Number of neutrons will be 107 minus 47, which is around 60. 60 over 47, the neutron to proton ratio will give us around 1.28. And then lastly, we can also look at tungsten, 184. Neutron to proton ratio after finding the number of neutrons, we shall realize that it's around 1.49. So we shall realize that as the atomic number increases, we tend to need more of neutrons than protons. That means for them to be stable, for atoms to be stable, they tend to have a higher number of neutrons compared to protons. So these four elements we have looked at, starting from neon, iron, silver and tungsten, these are stable. And all stable elements will be found to fall under this blue line that we are showing right now. So this blue, blue line is known as the stability region or stability belt. Yes. This stability belt is what we are looking at right now. This is the region where we shall find stable isotopes or stable atoms. These are atoms which will not be undergoing radioactivity because they, they have an extent of undistorted ability. They don't want to be distorted in any way. That is to say they are stable and they don't want to undergo any process of radioactivity. So this is the stability belt and we shall realize that as the atomic number increases, especially after 20, this is our atomic number 20, we shall see that the number of neutrons will start being slightly higher than the number of protons. However, when you reach at atomic number 83, around here, we shall realize that this is the last number of protons that where we shall have stable atoms. Any atom whose atomic number is above 83 will tend to be unstable because it will now be having too many protons. Too many protons because when you have too many protons, you will somehow 
have a very strong repulsion between the positively charged protons that cannot even be balanced out by the presence of the neutrons. So in this case, 83, we shall not have any stable element above atomic number 83. However, we have this region here where we have too many neutrons. Elements in this region will have too many neutrons as we shall see later on. Then elements in this region will have too many neutrons and too many protons, while elements in this other region will have too many protons compared to the number of neutrons. So the stability belt, the stability belt helps us identify which kind of radioactivity or decay this atoms can undergo for them to become stable. So you look at the three regions. We have this region here, that region, and that region. Starting with this region with too many neutrons, we shall realize that this region, atoms that have too many neutrons compared to the number of protons. For example, this atom here can have maybe 102 neutrons to the 30 something protons. So you realize that 102 neutrons, and then 30 protons, it has very many neutrons. As such, it will undergo what we call beta decay. Remember in beta decay, the neutron tends to convert to a proton and then a high moving electron, which is a beta particle. So beta decay favors atoms which have too many neutrons. As such, they'll be moving in this direction towards the stability belt a decrease in the number of neutrons accompanied by an increase in the number of protons. As such, such an atom will tend to move towards the stability belt. Then secondly, we have those that have too many neutrons and too many protons. These ones are favored by alpha decay because during alpha decay, we have emission of a positively charged helium nucleus. As such, we shall always have to decrease the number of that atom in terms of atomic number by two and then mass number by four. As such, the number of neutrons will decrease by two and the number of protons will also be decreasing by two. Thus helping that atom to move in this direction towards the stability belt. Decrease in number of protons and decrease in number of neutrons. Then lastly, we have too many protons, those that will fall below the stability line, these ones tend to have more protons than neutrons. For example, this atom here could be having around 78 protons and then around 38 neutrons. Such an atom needs to have, needs to reduce its number of protons and then increase its number of neutrons. And the, there are two ways it can do that. One is by electron capture, Electron capture will help convert one proton to a neutron, thus decreasing the number of protons and then increasing the number of neutrons. At the same time, you can also have a positive decay taking place. In this case, for the number of protons to decrease while the number of neutrons increase. However, we shall stick to electron capture for simplicity. Remember, we have two types of, of decay, beta minus decay and beta positive decay. So in this region, atoms with very many neutrons will undergo beta decay so that some neutrons are converted to protons, thus falling towards the stability line. In this region, atoms that have too many neutrons and too many protons are favored when they undergo alpha decay because it decreases both the neutrons and number of protons as well. Then lastly, in this region, we can have electron capture where we shall have one electron being captured and then it combines with the proton to form a neutron. And in this case, the number of protons will decrease by one and the number of neutrons will increase by one. Thus, this atom will start moving towards stability. That is to say, towards the stability region. Yes, basically those, that's all about the stability belt. However, we have other factors that may affect stability apart from the NP ratio, the neutron to proton ratio. That is to say atomic number can also affect the stability of a given atom. And we have seen that those atoms that have atomic number less than 20, they are, they are somehow stable. 
However, when the atomic number increases, somehow stability decreases until above 83, that atoms whose atomic number is greater than 83 will not be stable. Then secondly, you can also look at maybe mass number, although that's somehow also hidden under atomic number. Mass number, and then lastly, half-life. So you look at half-life, atoms that have a very long half-life will be much more stable than those that have a short half-life. So if your half-life is 10 years, and then your friend's half-life is three minutes, that means you has a half-life of 10 years, you are much more stable than one that has a half-life of three minutes. Yes. That's all about the stability belt. We shall continue with the radioactivity series. Yes, please have a good day. Thank you for watching. Please comment, subscribe, and share your views. See you next time.